In this video, we're going to learn the biscuit mixing method. Now, this method uh, is certainly used for biscuits, but it's also used uh, for maybe scones or different types of cookies. Um, so the ingredients uh, and ratios may change, but the mixing method is going to stay the same, which is what we're gonna learn today. So, um, it's important with the biscuit method that we start with cold ingredients. Um, so specifically the fat that we're using, uh, in today's case we're using butter and the liquid that we're using, uh, using milk, uh, that these ingredients are cold. What's going to be important in the biscuit method is we're going to try to cut the fat into the flour and maintain big pieces of fat. Um, when the fat is cold, it's going to be very hard and it's going to maintain those big pieces that we're cutting in. If the fat gets hot, we're going to melt that fat and it's going to disperse too much through the dough giving us a tougher product instead of a flaky biscuit or flaky cookie like we're trying to achieve with our biscuit method. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to sift our dry ingredients together. So I'm using a, a Tammy uh, sieve or a drum sieve uh, today. Uh, you could use, um, there are specific um, flour sifters that you can use, uh, but this works just fine as well. So I'm going to place my Tammy sieve over top of my bowl. I'm going to put my scaled flour, sugar, and salt. And the first step of all of our mixing methods is going to be proper scaling. So it's important to make sure that we're starting with properly scaled ingredients, that we have the right measure of each of the ingredients. So I'm just gonna use a bowl scraper and push these dry ingredients through my Tammy sieve. Sifting these ingredients is gonna do two things for me. Uh, the first is it's going to make sure that I work out any lumps uh, that were in uh, any of my dry ingredients. And it's also gonna help ensure that my ingredients are well mixed together. Okay, so I have all my dry ingredients mixed together. The next thing I need to do is I need to cut my fat into my flour. Uh, so for that, um, I'm going to use a pastry cutter. And what I'm going to do is I have my cold fat and I have it cut into small pieces. Um, if you start with really big pieces of fat, we're going to have to work it uh, quite a bit to get it down to the proper size that we're looking for. Whereas if we start with it already cut, it's a little bit less work for us uh, in this step. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my fat. I'm gonna use my pastry cutter. You see I kind of make a rocking motion with my pastry cutter as I rotate my bowl. Just work to incorporate that fat. Now depending on uh, what product it is we're making. Um, there are some, uh, for example, there are certain pie doughs that call for walnut size pieces of fat. So the pieces of fat would be, you know, really, really big. Um, and then, you know, for a mealy pie dough, maybe, uh, it might call for a cornmeal texture where we really break apart uh, this fat. So depending on the uh, recipe that we're using is gonna be the size that we cut our fat down to. If I wanted bigger pieces, I would be cutting it less. If I wanted smaller pieces, I would be cutting it more. Uh, kind of a common one that we see is, uh, it calls for pea size pieces of fat. So that's what I'll show you today in this. All right, so I think I have about my pea-sized pieces of fat. And then you see I have a couple pieces of fat that are just left on my knife. I'm just gonna use my fingers, press those out, make sure I don't leave any. Okay. And you can see here, I have my pea-sized pieces of fat that are just cut into my flour, and that's exactly what I want. All right, so the next step is going to be to mix in my liquid. Um, 
So I don't use my hands to, uh, for this step in mixing just because I have body heat um, and um, I don't want to heat up that fat and melt that fat into the flour. So I'm going to again use my bowl scraper to, uh, to incorporate this, uh, this liquid. So I'm going to go ahead and add my liquid. Just going to use my bowl scraper until all of my liquid is incorporated into my dry. It's important that I don't over mix. Over mixing is going to uh, develop the gluten uh, and could make tough biscuits. So I have my, uh, my base together in kind of this shaggy dough. My next step is going to be to knead my dough. So I'm going to put a little bit of flour down on my board. Make sure I get all of this dough out of my bowl. Use this uh, bowl scraper. Scrape out my bowl. A little bit of flour on my hands. And I'm just going to work to collect this dough into a ball. So now I have a nice dough ball that's starting to form together. And I'm going to knead this about 20 turns. So I'm going to press it out and kind of fold it over. Press it out, fold it over. Give it a rotation. Now the way I knead this dough is going to help me have a nice dough ball that's going to form together, but I don't want to over knead it. So I said about 20 turns, which is what this biscuit recipe calls for. Uh, too few needs, it may not hold together. Uh, too much, it's going to overdevelop that gluten, uh, and I'm going to have tough biscuits. All right, so that was about 20 needs, and you can see I have this nice dough ball now. So at this point, I would go ahead and uh, let my dough relax. So I've developed a little bit of gluten by mixing and kneading. So I would let this uh, dough ball sit, let that gluten relax, uh, before I would roll it out and cut it uh, into the proper size for whatever application I'm using this method for. So let's review. When using our biscuit method, we're going to begin by sifting together our properly scaled dry ingredients. Next, remember with the biscuit method, it's important to use cold ingredients to ensure that our fat is properly dispersed throughout our dough. Finally, don't over mix or over knead your dough. We want to make sure that we have a tender product in the end and not overdevelop the gluten, which will give us a tough product.